Hello and welcome. I'm Steve Clemens, Editor-at-Large of The Hill. Thanks for joining us for our program today, Prioritizing the Patient, a virtual deep dive into our current healthcare landscape and how we can move the needle, so to speak, on affordable quality care. Before we begin, I'd like to thank our sponsor, Consumers for Quality Care, for supporting today's conversations. As we struggle to control a raging pandemic, it's clear that our current healthcare system doesn't serve all patients equally. That gaps and barriers exist is not news to any of us, but we can we use this moment to address some of the problems that have existed for far too long. Today's conversation will address inequities in the access and delivery of health care. We're going to try to arrive at the right balance of cost and quality of care, look at the social contract in the health care landscape, uh, and how to put the patient at the center. We have a fantastic lineup of speakers to discuss all of this and more, including members of Congress, leading physicians, and health care experts. But first, a few housekeeping notes. You can tweet us at the, at, at the Hill events. It's all one word, the Hill events, at the hashtag, hashtag the Hill patients. We're broadcasting live and we'll be taking your questions throughout the program. As with any live stream, if it goes out, they say push refresh and hopefully it will all come back. It never works for me, but I'm told it will work for you. And with that, my first guest is Congressman Larry Bouchon, a member of the Energy and Commerce Committee. Before joining Congress, he was a practicing physician. Congressman, thank you so much for joining us today. Look, our job today is to discuss if, if, if we were to put the patient at the center of the American healthcare system, as we sit in the middle of a every hundred year uh, pandemic, it seems, what are the elements and scaffolding and the pieces that we need to address at this moment to create, to use this crisis constructively uh, on behalf of America's patients? Well, first of all, thanks for having me. And I like the title of your program because as a member of Congress and a former healthcare provider, that should be the focus in, the, in government. And frequently it's on the money. So there's a couple of big picture issues. I think is more data for the American consumer about healthcare quality, um, and there needs to be more uh, transparency on healthcare pricing. Those are two big issues that if the American people had more information, they could have more input into their basic health healthcare. And I've been working on a variety of issues to uh, make that happen. Look, we don't have a command and control system in healthcare. We have a lot of moving pieces. We have insurers, we have pharmaceutical companies, we have pharmacy benefit managers, um, a lot of, you know, a lot of different, we have providers and doctors and physicians like yourself. In fact, I want to note that you're a very active uh, physician, have done, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll make a very bad joke here in a minute, you're a heart surgeon. You know, a buddy of mine who was an ambassador talked about his former head of state uh, once having heart surgery and the ambassador called me up and said, Steve, you're not going to believe it. They found a heart. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there you go. I'm sure you've heard that one before. But in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the in the in the social contract between all these moving pieces, because we don't control all of it, are you worried that any of the elements are getting out of control? Yeah, I mean, I think the business side of medicine right now is um, is really taking a lot of the control operationally away from the practitioners, the providers, people that actually are in the arena taking care of the patient, are being controlled by the governmental agencies. Um, their, their own administration at their own local hospitals and clinics. So, yes, I think as a provider, from a provider's perspective, uh, more of the focus needs to go back on the patient, number one, as is the title of your program here, but also get back to more input from the, at the provider level um, uh, for operational control of what works and what doesn't and quit focusing um, mostly on the business aspect and honestly trying to make uh, more money for publicly held companies in some areas of the healthcare system. So I think, yes. And the only way you can make that happen is, as I mentioned in my opening comment, is the American consumer needs transparency in the system mm. and, and so that they can assess where the money's going, what, what they're paying for, and on top of that, what the quality of the service they're being provided is. And we just don't see a lot of that in our system at this point. Congressman, you have been concerned, as I understand it, with, you know, essentially the lack of the kind of data you need, information sharing in the systems. And you've introduced legislation called the Immunization Infrastructure Modernization Act. So we're sitting in the middle of, you know, a uh, uh, dramatic need for vaccinations, vaccines across the nation. How would this address that infrastructure? Well, I think what we've found out is, you know, through our public health uh, systems, both at the local and state level, they're really insufficient uh, structurally to handle 
the pandemic. And that's not a criticism of those people who are working every day to improve the lives of the people they serve. But what we need more is, is more of a national logistics plan to co help coordinate between all of our public health services. And honestly, we need more money because the, we mm -hmm. found out that uh, as far as staffing and as far as other uh, infrastructure like IT programs, uh, basic things like that, it was just insufficient for this type of pandemic. And, uh, you know, we're improving, but we still have challenges. And so that's what I hope to do is try to address, hey, what are the problems in the public health system? How do we make them better? Um, how do we get more money into the system and recognize the importance of what we have? It, it unfortunately took a crisis to show us our deficits. Uh, you know, one of the things we'll be discussing with other, you know, with uh, uh, another member of Congress, but other in, in the uh, conversations today is how to make health, I guess, health care outcomes more equitable, how to address, yes. you know, parts of the community uh, that haven't been on that track. What are your thoughts about what the right approach to creating more equitable health care outcomes and, and what that social contract yeah. ought to look like? Well, this is a big challenge because I represent primarily a rural area of the right. country and rural America and urban America have something in common. They have uh, difficulties accessing the health care system. And we're finding that out with the with the vaccines that the distribution of the vaccines is there. But then the fundamental uh, health care related issues that people had uh, before that are limiting their access. And it's not just in health care. It's the, the, their ability to access the Internet. Uh, the, the ability to have transportation to get to um, their physician's appointments or to get the vaccine. So it's really a multi-pronged approach that uh, honestly affects both urban and rural America. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a, it's a real big challenge. And I think what's happened is we've, we've uh, centralized our health care system. We've uh, so-called Walmartized our health care system where a lot of it is based in larger urban areas uh, in certain parts of urban areas, and we've left out uh, some of our fellow citizens in the rural and what, I, what I'll say the more disadvantaged areas of, of our urban communities. And so we need to address that. One of those areas is maternal health, and I've been working on that. And surprisingly, some areas of the country have very high maternal mortality. That's where the woman dies after childbirth or mm. during childbirth. It doesn't have to be that way, though. We heard testimony from Parkland Hospital in inner city Dallas that serves a primarily uh, poor Medicaid or uninsured population, they have outstanding data. So what we've done is put forward legislation that would help give federal grants to uh, spread that type of information, what Parkland's doing and how we can you know, bring that to other areas to improve the quality of care. The data is out there. We, we need uh, dissemination of best practices so that everybody can, um, can improve the quality of care. But it's going to be a big challenge because uh, of the way our healthcare system is structured. Again, more focusing on larger healthcare systems versus local clinics, um, and uh, you know we're going to be working on that. It's a challenge for both urban and rural America. You know, one of the uh, you know topics I, I always worry about losing listeners when I raise it, but it's one of the hottest topics in healthcare are essentially payments and reimbursements and Medicare charges and whatnot. Yep. Um, and I know that you've been actively trying to both reform, try and get money going the right direction for folks. Again, putting yep. the patient at the center of this process, opposed to sure. you know, becoming you know, a yet again victim in the process. What do you think the most important things that we need to do when we look at payments and reimbursements and you know, the dollar side of the healthcare picture for, for people? Well, as I mentioned earlier, I mean, the first step is we have to have transparency. The, the American consumer needs to understand what they're paying for and why and where the money's going. And we just don't have that. Uh, you know, at the Medicare level, the government, well, governmental level, the Medicaid level, uh, you know, reimbursements have dropped for years. And, and some of that was maybe uh, appropriate in the Medicare space. But we've got to the point now where it limits access to physicians. And I'm concerned about that. I worked on that at the end of the last Congress. Unfortunately, we got some mitigation of the proposed Medicare cuts uh, into the omnibus bill at the end of the year. But still, um, we need to make sure that providers out there are appropriately uh, paid for the services that they provide. But also, we want to avoid 
uh, patients getting services they don't need hmm. uh, and the federal government and other pay, payers paying those bills. So to do that, we need transparency, not only in pricing, but in quality. And this can be done. And we need we need to do that. The Society of Thoracic Surgeons, my society, has had a database for 25 years on the quality of care that surgeons are providing. This needs to be available to the American public. We can get the cost of health care down, but we have, have to have the patient at the, at the center of this, hmm. and they have to have the information necessary. Congressman, if, the, if President Biden gave you a call tonight and said, hey, I know, you know you're a physician, you're a doctor, heart doctor, um, I know we're not in the same party, but what are the most important guardrails you think I need to be aware of as they roll out, um, you know, dealing with the Affordable Care Act, dealing with health care, dealing with how you get more people covered? What would you tell him? Well, again, I, I, I know it sounds like a broken record, but I would tell him that we need transparency on the business side mm -hmm. of health care. Right. And so that the American consumer understands what's happening. And we need more transparent, more transparency on the quality. I mean, and that can be done. But the, the again, the business side of, of medicine is difficult, a difficult nut to crack uh, because it's very complicated. And there's people uh, doing things the right way there. Hmm. But. The systems have become so big um, that the American consumer is no longer at the center of it. And right. you really, you know, if, if you walked into a hospital today and say, hey, my, how much is it going to cost me to have my gallbladder taken out? They would tell you, well, it depends. We don't know. Uh, I've always said you can go to the worst heart surgeon in the country or the best. And if they have a Medicare patient, they get paid the same. Well, that's not that way in any other business where poor quality work gets reimbursed at the same level. So we knew a need to assess that. But again, I would tell the president, let's work towards transparency in the in the business side of healthcare, and let's look towards more uh, quality data being presentable uh, to the American people in a way that they can understand. Congressman, we're out of time, but I, 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 you know, I like you being a broken record and talking about transparency. I get the, the message and the importance of it. And I think one of the things that's happening out there, you've tweeted about it, are, is the question of um, surprise medical billing and how do you yeah. prevent patients from running into those moments, but also you, how do you protect the equities of health plans? You know, that seems to me solvable, um, but it's a big issue out there. Do you think it's solvable? Yeah, I mean, I think what we, the, the, what we passed at the end of the year that got into the omnibus, uh, a, a, sol a solution for now for the surprise medical billing situation uh, is going to help. And I think, you know, again, it's about transparency. Let me just tell you, your, your viewers, um, what happens? You go to the hospital. Uh, yesterday, your physician was in network, but that changed overnight. Mm. And you didn't get that information. So you go to for your physician. Next thing you know, you get a bill, you know, for a bunch of money. And you're saying, what happened here? Well, the, there was no information trans, transmitted to the consumer so they could make right. that decision. Hey, my physician's not in network. So we've basically solved that problem by balancing uh, the interests of the patient, number one, taking them out of the picture so that they don't owe any money for this type of mistake, but also making sure the provider gets reimbursed at a fair uh, rate uh, that doesn't overburden the insurance companies. So I think we've struck a pretty good balance uh, on that issue. Well, Congressman Larry Bichon, who's a Maybe a physician first, congressman second, maybe or maybe the other way around uh, from Indiana. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you'll come back. I, mean, I know we're going to be at this issue uh, all year, and I think putting patients first is a vital frame for this. So thanks for being so enthusiastic about it and joining us today. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. I'll come back anytime. Excellent.